So one of the questions that we get asked all the time is what exercises you can do from home that's going to help your swimming. Uh, now given that most of you are going to be spending quite a lot of time at home right now and we're not sure how many pools are going to be open, we thought that this is a good time to share with you some of our best exercises you can do from home and using minimal equipment. Yep, so with that we're going to be doing a series of videos that you guys can follow along at home. They're not going to require much equipment, so it's little to no equipment needed. Um, this one is obviously going to be focusing on swim specific exercises, however we will be doing a whole series of different core body exercises, small amount of weight needed exercises um, and general core stability exercises. So it should give you something to focus on and small goals to work on whilst we're all in this difficult situation together. Yeah, so these exercises should be um, conducted in a space and an environment where you're not likely to knock anything over. Make sure you've got plenty of room and make sure you build into them slowly and at your own pace. Um, and always do a bit of a warm up before you start these exercises, whether that is maybe a little jog up and down the stairs if you have any, or just doing some star jumps on the spot just to get the blood flowing before you go into your workout. Disclaimer, these exercises probably have different names, however these are the Team Charles Barclay edition so we may have given them different names to what you've heard before. Okay, let's do this. This is prone swimmers. So laying face down using a lightweight arms making a circular motion and you can progress this exercise by lifting your legs up and doing a flutter kick as well. If you haven't got any weights, you can improvise using something simple as a bottle of water. Um, the weight that you use for this needs to be very light, so it shouldn't be difficult to find some kind of weight alternative. This exercise is called Spider-Man Press-Ups. For this exercise, you can start very simply by doing a knee style press-up and then rotating your knee across um, and then progressing that into a full style press-up and doing the knee rotations. This is really good for swimming because it's working through your core, so it's strengthening all of the muscles that you'll use whilst you swim and also bringing in the rotation element as well, so exactly how you would move your body through the water. So one of my favourite exercises is the ab wheel rollouts. Um, really good dynamic core exercise, probably one of the most hardest ones you can do, especially if you're able to do them as a standing ab wheel, which I can confess both of us can't do that yet, but we're building towards it. Um, you can use an ab wheel if you have one, but if you don't, you can use a towel on a, a slippery surface as an alternative. And you can do it as a couple if you want. So the key coaching point for this particular exercise is to make sure that your core is always engaged and the way you do that is pulling your navel, so your belly button in and when you're going out you won't, don't want to have an over arch in your back. Um, you might find that you can only go out uh, a few centimetres at a time. One of the a good progression of this is to make a mark on the floor uh, where you are going and then each day try and go a little bit further until eventually you can go all the way out. Once you've gone all the way out you can look at progressing it to things like standing ab wheels and making it even more difficult. So the next two exercises I like to do as a superset which simply means back to back and it is Swiss ball pikes and hamstring curls. Um, if you don't have access to a Swiss ball you can use a towel on a slippery surface such as the kitchen floor. Key coaching points on this is to make sure your core is engaged, pulling that belly button in tight and try to work to your range of motion again. So some of you might find that hamstring curls in particular 
um, are very, very difficult to do, pulling the ball all the way up to your bottom. So make sure that you are working to your range of motion and try to progress in an orderly fashion. We've known this exercise, Lola Kicks, as it's one of her favourite exercises. There's two ways you can do this exercise. The first style is just laying on your back, kicking your legs. And you'll notice that my hands are just slightly under my back, just to support the slight arch in my back. But the main aim on this is to be pushing your back into the floor whilst kicking your legs. And then you can reverse Lola Kick by going onto your front and you'll see that we have paired in with a Swiss ball, which obviously you can use different things like a cushion um, and you may need a partner to hold that there so you can kick your legs. And this is obviously really good for the lower half of your swim, strengthening up your core as well as your hamstrings um, to make sure you've got a nice constant leg, leg kick throughout. So the next exercise is sit-ups, but we have progressed it to using a weight. This can be any object with any weight, i.e. a dog or a bag of protein. Um, we can do this on your own or as a pair if you want to make it a bit more interesting. This is obviously working through your core, slight bit of upper body strength as well. So this is a really challenging exercise, but it can be good fun. Um, working in a couple, uh, the person on the floor will be holding the legs of the person throwing the other person's legs. So you're going to be bringing your legs up to the partner who will then throw your legs down towards the floor and the other person has to try and not let their legs slam down into the floor. So this is really challenging on the core. You can progress this exercise by getting the partner to throw the legs at an angle which brings in a little bit more of oblique um, strength as well. Okay, so the next group of exercises involve a pulley cord. If you don't have one of these at home, you can use something like an inner tube or anything that's got a bit of elastic, even like an old pair of leggings or an old pair of pants. Um, so yeah, really just have a look around your house. So using a stretch cord, we can really start to replicate some swimming uh, form and technique. You can do a variety of exercises. Um, here are two of my favorites. Using a stretch cord suspended from the ceiling, you can really work on the catch phase of freestyle. Um, arm extended out in front of you, and all you're gonna do is just a slight pull down, mimicking the catch of freestyle. You can also do a more ho holistic movement, which is probably more of a exercise rather than working on technique, but you can get a, a real good burn in the shoulders and the lats when doing this. Uh, properly and with the right amount of tension. Really want to focus on the rotation through the core of each exercise. So not simply just pulling down with the arms, but also rotating through the hips as well. Um, for these exercises, you can start really simply by just using the pulley cord and doing some upper body work, getting that swimming catch phase and just working through your stroke. And then to progress that, you can add things like a Swiss ball, so you've got some element of balance in there as well. Um, we must kind of reiterate these exercises can get quite difficult. Um, I can talk from personal experience. Um, so yeah, just progress it at your own rate and see how you get on. So this exercise is called medicine ball step throughs. For this, you do not need a medicine ball, you can use any weight. The key aims of this exercise are to try and keep your body as upright as possible and not swinging out of your kind of sequence of movement um, and just keeping that core engaged and obviously working on both sides so that you're nice and balanced in the water. So this exercise is called wall ball twists and it's totally made up by us but it completely replicates the freestyle motion especially when you use a weighted ball that you want to try and push into the surface of the wall at the extension phase so you're just basically mimicking what your body would be doing during the freestyle catch also get quite a good calf burn workout um, particularly if you do this for a prolonged period of time key coaching point for this exercise is rotate through the hips, try to keep your shoulders and your hips in alignment but rotating through so that your shoulders and your hips are always in line with each other but not always in line with the wall. So this exercise is called a RDL or a rear deadlift but we've kind of done a variation on that exercise. 
I'm using a kettlebell in this exercise, but again, you can use anything that's got a bit of weight. It's actually quite difficult in the beginning to do it without a weight, just working on that single leg balance. So um, if you want to begin without a weight, that's absolutely fine. Um, as you can obviously see, it's really working through the core um, and also getting a slight bit of rotation in as you lean down to pick up that weight. Um, but yeah, it's going to be great for your swim performance. The next exercise is called Nordic Drops. Um, you can use this with a partner holding your feet or using um, any kind of weighted object to counterbalance your weight. And the idea behind this is you're eccentrically loading the hamstrings. It's a very, very challenging exercise, but it's particularly good for building strength and endurance in the hamstrings. Um, try to get some kind of pillow or padding down so that you can just let yourself fall down when you get to that point where you can no longer maintain the tension in your hamstrings. Some really strong athletes can go all the way down and all the way back up and admittedly we can't do that so yeah it's a particularly good hamstring exercise and very good for developing your freestyle kick. And if you haven't got anyone who can hold your legs then you can put your feet under something quite heavy that isn't going to move, maybe a sofa or a bed. Um, yeah, if you haven't got someone to do the exercise with. Yeah, so this is obviously an extremely difficult situation for everyone to be in right now. Um, on a personal level, we've just had our race season completely turned on its head. But on the grand scheme of things, our problems seem so much more trivial compared to a lot of others. But yeah, we're all in this together. We're still processing it. And um, we're going to be doing a, a small video on how we are mentally handling this situation and how we are trying to find ways to motivate ourselves through this particularly challenging time. Yeah, so you guys at home are dealing with this and obviously we're dealing with it as well. So we want to be as open and honest with you guys about how we're dealing with it and the best ways that we can all get through this situation together. So appreciate that this is not a substitute for swimming, um, but it's the best that we can do for now. Um, but what I will say is when the time comes when we can go back to swimming and everything is normal again, this would be a very, very good routine to just keep as part of your regular routine. Uh, as swimmers, we used to do these core work um, at least two or three times a week and it made a massive difference to our performance in the water. So I'd highly recommend keeping these core work going for as long as possible. Yeah, so thanks for watching our video on swim specific exercises that you can do at home. We're gonna be doing a series of videos of other types of exercises you can do to help your bike and your run. Um, yeah, so stay tuned for those. Um, we do wanna just have a bit of fun with this. So as you can see, we're not taking it too seriously. We're just trying to keep our training up during this difficult time. So hopefully you can have fun with it as well. And don't panic if you can't do the exercises straight away.